P-A-S-C-A-L You are now rocking with that dude Pascal We be going wild Haitian in the building So, so, so original Got the haters Catch your feelings Get your hands up to the ceiling And keep them held high Cause only this is ready Forget about it, goodbye Hold up, we're just saying hi Five somebody rise up Weekdays, catch us live Somebody, let's go Good morning Good afternoon and good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Pascal Show. Hope you guys are all doing well out there. Hope this show finds you in good spirits, as it should. Hopefully you guys had a good Sunday night. Okay, sorry for my tardiness, but I had a few things I wanted to get together, okay, um, before we jump into all of this. And, of course, I want to extend an apology for last night. I'm going to be honest. I got done watching the... Wendy Williams documentary, you know, this docu-series that we're discussing. And uh, honestly, I was like, okay, I need a, I need a little bit more time to process this, go through all this stuff. And then, of course, I realized how late it was. And I was like, nah, you know what? I, I'm, we're going to talk about this tomorrow morning. We'll still do everything that we plan on doing, but we're going to talk about this tomorrow morning. I just needed some, I needed some rest. And I'm sure a lot of you guys did too. It's Sunday, you know? And I don't get to rest very often, you know? So I was like, you know what? I'm going to take this opportunity to shut everything down and we'll just reconvene today. So I appreciate you guys being here, being a part of the conversation. Like I said, this is a conversation that needs to be had. I mean, I, I said it before in the, sh- in the previous show that this is a, this is a cautionary tale, okay? Um, but it still is a cautionary tale. But I also think that there's something else going on with this docu docu series i think they're trying to say something here but they only did it within the last like 20 minutes of the doggone docu series which is interesting it's a lot of build up just for those last 20 minutes i'll explain here in just a minute okay because i got some things to talk about and some people that were involved in this these documentaries in this docu series that we need to talk about for show And of course, we got to talk about Wendy. So please do me a favor. Hit that like button down below, please. And thank you. That would really, really mean a lot. All right. Send it past 300 likes as you start to file in. Okay. That really mean the world to me. Hit that reaction button. If you're watching on Facebook, please do me a favor. If you're on Facebook, crush that follow button on my follow button on my Facebook page, please. And thank you. Then, of course, go crush that subscribe button on my YouTube channel. If you are watching over there okay and then of course do not forget if you want to support the channel simply hit that join button down below all right become a member that would really mean the world to me as well all right a lot of things mean the world to me all right of course if you want to support even more go join my patreon patreon.com forward slash the pascal show we are having some really great conversations and or at least conversation starters over on the patreon page so go join that if you can that'd be greatly appreciated all right check out my merch page pascalmerch.com if you want to support over there got some really great clothing okay everything from sayings shirts with sayings on it to custom handcrafted t-shirts and hoodies go check them out okay anyway let's get into this guys like i said we 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 got to jump into this and the, the thing is, is um, let me let me just first say, um, let me first just pull this up here really quick. All right. First off, Kimberly in Japan, thank you so much for being a member for the past 15 months. Dag nabbit. Thank you so much for your support. Hey, Pascal and fam. I'm so ready for this. Um, I have so many questions. OK, so so do I. I have a lot of questions, too. OK. Uh, this docu series was definitely an interesting one. At first, you know, when we when we talked about it yesterday, I had a lot of questions, you know, and I still I still got a lot of questions. Number one is okay. Obviously, we're all wondering. I mean, everyone's wondering what's up with this. Who is this guardian? Who is the guardian? Okay, that they keep talking about over and over again. I know that this is a court appointed thing like this is a court appointed guardian okay but i still keep wondering who the f- is this guardian okay now the reason why i say that is because i think this docu series 
was not only very telling, it's heartbreaking as hell. Man, was it heartbreaking. Um, but extremely revealing on how bad this guardianship is for Wendy Williams. Now, trust me, like I said, we're going to talk about that here in a second. It's just something that I saw with my own two eyes, what I consumed, what I witnessed, what I watched. And I keep wondering, how is this getting any better? This guardianship, how is this working out for Wendy Williams? Now, there's a few things that we need to talk about, okay? And I might be all over the place, so just ride with me, okay? You feel me? You're just going to have to ride with me on this because, you know, I'm just shooting from the hip and just talking about what I saw and what I consumed and how I processed it myself, okay? You know, it's not like I have uh, some nice, neat bullet point type thing. This is just a discussion. We're going to talk about this like we're, you know, like family, like we always do. But there was a lot of things in this docu-series from beginning all the way to end that obviously was breaking my heart. She is hell-bent, and it's almost tragic. She is hell-bent on stardom. She's hell-bent on getting her show back, getting her. And I feel like her getting the, her show back or her getting back on TV, or even the podcast, all right, getting that up and running. I think that's her just reclaiming some semblance of control, some semblance of power, getting back some of that power that she doesn't have right now, okay? I mean, at least in this docu-series, I don't know where she is right now, physically, present day, but in this docu-series, you can see she really doesn't have a whole lot of power doesn't have a whole lot of con control over what she does, et cetera. The only thing that she has control over is the drinking. And I'm not sitting here saying, oh, she should keep drinking. Hail to the, hail to the, no, she shouldn't be drinking at all. In my personal opinion, that's the, the, that's the worst thing she could be doing for herself. But what I found interesting as, you know, as I've had time to sit here and process sleep on it, let it can, you know, let it just kind of marinate all the way down to the, to the marrow. Okay. I realized that this is her attempt. I feel like there's a lot that's going on here. And the reason why these things are happening is because she wants control. And I think before, I mean, I, mean, I don't know what the show in the breakdown of what the show was like for her was, but you know, I, I don't know if she had control over her even even control over her show, even when she was at the height of her career. But still, for her, that's some <clears throat> that's some semblance of normalcy for her. Stardom, fame, the show, knowing that she has to wake up and talk to people, right? The fact that she has to be there and deliver the goods, give her best face, give her best voice and talk. Now it's been stripped from her. Now she can't even do any of that stuff, right? So it is really uh, heartbreaking when you see this someone who is icon, iconic, okay? Definitely a trailblazer that did things that I think none of us, um, that a lot of us would, would dream to have right to have accomplished and then suddenly have that stripped away from you because of various things not only just because of her addictions okay not because of her crutches and her vices but because of all these other things that are going on her dementia all the other ailments that she has that she's battling every single day suddenly all, all of a sudden out of nowhere you can't even get on the microphone and talk anymore it's pretty disheartening okay it's pretty disheartening. Um, and yes, Nicole, I agree. She needed, she definitely needs a, a routine. She doesn't have that routine out here. She ain't got no routine. <laughs> She's showing up, or they they're waking her up from her drunken stupor with bottles, empty bottles everywhere, etc. Okay. And she's just an absolute mess. Okay. Um, and it's bad. It's very, very, it's, it's very depressing. Okay. 
So it's just really hard to see someone fall from grace in this way, in this fashion. She clearly is not okay. Now, of course, we learn later on that she goes to an inpatient facility later on in the in the show or later on in this in this docu series, which I mean, I'm hoping was the best thing. I'm assuming was the best thing for her. But there's a lot of different things we got to talk about. Man, there's so many different things we got to talk about. Okay, so we we going to talk about those things. All right. First off, let me just say this. I. I, I, I said something about this before, but I'm gonna say I'm gonna say it now. I'm gonna say it again. Okay. I I repeat, I do not like this woman right here. I just don't. Sean, I don't like her. I, I know, I know that's very, very bold for me to say, but I don't like her. I right? let me just let me just let me just keep it a buck with y'all. Okay. Not a fan. Not a fan. In fact, you should never hire your fans to run your ish. And that's exactly what happened with Wendy. She hired this woman as her publicist. And this is a yes person. This is a fan. I've come to that conclusion. I'm going to keep it a buck. This is a fan. This is not someone who's out here for her looking out for Wendy's best interest. I think she's getting off on the fact that it's Wendy Williams that she's working for. She don't give a damn about she don't give a damn about what Wendy's well-being and what she's doing and, and making her look good, making sure she's cog like cognizant of the things that she's doing, making sure she is on point for any meetings and whatnot. We're gonna talk about LA. We're going to talk about L.A., but honestly, this woman right here is not. No, no, this is a dangerous individual. I said it and I don't care. This is a dangerous individual to have in your, in your, in your team, on your roster, out here rooting for you, especially when you are battling dementia and a slew of other ailments as well. A yes person like this is not someone you need, especially when you are you are having battling things. This is not what you bring. This is not someone you have in your on your team. Okay, I'm just going to say that first and foremost. You got to okay. Let me explain because Gabriella said okay. Explain Pascal. Interesting. Okay, I will. And I will, Gabriella. Let me explain to you why. We're going to talk about L L.A. Because L.A. shouldn't have happened. Yes, I said it. L.A. should not have happened. Why, you ask? There's a couple different things that why L.A. shouldn't have happened. First, within this guardianship, okay, regardless of how you feel about it, if you are, if you are for the guardianship or against the guardianship, there are certain rules certain things that she, that Wendy Williams has to abide by. She has to abide by this guardian. She has to let this guardian know anytime she leaves the, the, the state, anytime she travels, et cetera. That's just part of the deal. I'm sorry. Those are the breaks, okay? Now, what happened here is Wendy turns to, allegedly, this is from what Sean said here, okay? Now, you see this in this documentary. She says, oh, you know, uh, she was frantic. She she said she needed to get out to L.A., et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. She needs to be out there. So we went. We did. You know, I, I bought tickets and we went out to L. And we're out here in L.A. without telling Will, who's also the 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 liaison between the family and the guardian. Okay, that's what I've realized now. Okay, Will is the is the middleman between the guardian and the family which is very interesting as well. We're going to talk about Will in a little bit, okay? But Will's pissed off because he's like, why didn't you tell me that you were going to go off to L.A.? When are you coming back? Oh, I'll be back in a couple weeks. The hell you are? You better get back on a plane and get your ass back here. What the hell are you doing out there? We got some meetings set up. Why are you even taking her out there? 
who on God's green earth gave you the green light <clears throat> to fly out with Wendy Williams to L.A.? Who gave her the green light? Who said that she had the, the rights to make those kind of decisions without even passing this by will, the guardian, or any other person that's involved? Do you realize how dangerous that can be? Listen, I'm not sitting here saying like single black female, you know, sing, single white female type stuff. I'm not saying she's going to re, re, re or anything of that sort. But at the same time, do you realize how dangerous that is? What if Wendy has a mental break and just runs off? In the streets of L.A. I get it that she's Wendy Williams, but at the same time, people do wild things, especially when, when dementia is kicking hard. You have a mental relapse, and next thing you know, you, you're, try, you're running everywhere trying to find them. You take two seconds to go take a, a pee in the bathroom, and they run out the hotel, running down the street, and you're, you're, you're spending hours trying to find them. All I'm saying is, what she did was reckless and stupid. And I'm not even done yet with L.A. I'm not even done yet. I'm just getting started. So you don't tell people that you're going to go out there. You buy tickets. You hop on a plane, not letting anybody know. Because for some odd reason, you're representing her. Oh, my gosh, I'm representing Wendy Williams. That's all you give a damn about. You don't give a damn about her well-being. Then you go out there. You do your thug thizzle. Before you, they have this meeting, they're out here having dinner or like some lunch or something like that. All right? She's sitting there chilling in the cut. Now, you know for a fact that Wendy Williams got a drinking problem. She likes that liquor. This woman orders Wendy Williams, orders a drink. Liquor. Let's be real. What's the number one thing she should not be drinking or consuming or putting into her body at all? What's her vice? What is Wendy Williams kryptonite? Alcohol. What does she do? She orders some alcohol. She gets it. She's sitting there drinking it right in front of this woman right here. And Sean just sits there and goes, Just sitting there chilling. Just chilling. Like what she was doing. It's normal. It's just her breathing. It's just her breathing. So then one of the producers asks her, hey, you know, how you feel about that? And this woman has the, mm -hmm, has the freaking cojones to sit there and go, well, I ain't never seen her, her drunk. The many times I've seen her drink, hmm, key word there, the many times, or key phrase, the many times I've seen her drink, I've never seen her drunk. What kind of answer is that? So you're just an enabler. You're a yes person. Remember what I just said, key phrase, the many times I've seen her drink. So remember when I said in yesterday's show, I said, who buying the liquor? Who buying that liquor? It's her. I guarantee you. I guarantee you it's her. Think about it for a second. She sits there. She's drinking this drink. She shouldn't be doing this liquor. What does she do? Looks at her and just lets it go. Okay. That's, that's, the, it, we, we, see what I'm saying? Like I, I said, okay. You took her out to L.A. without anybody else's knowledge. You have a woman that's mentally ill and has all these other ailments. But you're going to take care of her. That's just the tip of the iceberg. We ain't. We now underneath looking at the, the mass that's underneath the water of this, of this freaking iceberg. All right? So that's problem number 17,369. 17, so moving on, they actually do have a meeting, which, hey, you know, great. Woo-woo. But let's talk about that really quick. This woman <clears throat> takes 
Wendy Williams to this meeting. And Wendy Williams, who is not, she's not of sound mind. She's not. We can all agree on that. She ain't okay. She takes her to this meeting. And Wendy Williams says, after the meeting, she's like, oh, I thought it was great. It went great. I don't think it went very well. Immediately, she goes in there, and she's taking off her shoes to show off her feet. Now, we already know she's dealing with um, with some things, okay, that have to do with her feet. I, I, I forgot how it's, what it's what it's called. I, I'm not even going to say it because I don't want to. I don't want to mess it up. But her, her feet are in bad shape. She can barely. She only can feel. She says like two percent of her feet. I like guess some serious stuff. She has to ride around in a, a wheelchair. But I'm surprised that she's able to move around like she's she has been. Okay, walking around and all that. She goes, oh, I just thought it would be funny. I'm just showing it to you because I thought it would be it would be funny, right? It's not funny. And she's like, yeah, you know, it's comical in, in, in a way. No, it shows that this, that Wendy is not okay. It shows that Wendy is not okay. Instantly, right off the bat, you come in and you're, 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 pulling off your shoes and throwing your feet in executive producers' faces? I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Unless she really did throw that comedic button in there, but I doubt it. Okay? Lymphedema? Lymphedema? <clears throat> Hopefully I'm saying that right. Somebody correct it phonetically for me if I'm, if I'm saying it wrong. Okay? But this word, kitten, thank you so much. And everybody else who's been Debbie, Michael, uh, everybody else. Okay. So she takes her to this meeting. She does that. And to me, that shows proof positive that this woman is not fully okay. She is not fully healed. And God knows what else wild things or wild stuff that was said or did in that meeting. Because even in the, you know, they they had a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, title cards with just information. And th they were like, NBC w was, uh, did, you know, declined to, to speak on this, uh, about this meeting, to comment on this meeting. But honestly, they didn't get picked up. It's not like they offered her a show right after she walked out the door. Because obviously they saw uh, the rumors are true. The rumors are true that she is not okay. She's mentally not okay. But this Chica, her publicist, publicist, enabler w number one, okay, felt it in that it was in her power to take this woman from New York all the way out to L.A. to do this meeting with, with NBC because she wanted to secure that bag. That's it. She didn't give a damn, but she doesn't care about her well-being. If she knew what's going on with Wendy, there would have been a different conversation going on here. They wouldn't have been out in L.A. right then and there. They would have made sure to tighten her up, make sure everything's okay with her, make sure she's mentally prepared for something like that. Before you just throw her onto a, a plane and just, Hurl her out into the left coast. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. Reckless. And then even in the car, as she's talking about these things, right? She's talking about, you know, oh, yeah, you know, the, I think the meeting was great. It was not. I guarantee you it was not. If it was great, NBC would have been like, hey, Wendy, baby. Baby, we want to give you a show, baby. You know what I mean? Clearly, that would have been the situation. But it wasn't. So Wendy Williams for crying out loud. Okay? But in the car, they start talking about management because Wendy's upset with Will. Why would Will be mad? I don't think we have to think about that too much. But why would she be mad? Why would Will be mad? 
You didn't tell him that you were going across the country to do all this stuff with this woman who is just a is a publicist, not a manager. That's manager stuff. That's Will's job. He didn't know anything about this, right? So she's like, oh, yeah, I'm going to let him go or, you know, I'm going to fire him. I need to find a better manager. And the producer or whoever's shooting, the, shooting in the car asks that girl, that same girl, Sean, about possibly managing. And she's like, well, yeah, you know, I am kind of taking on more managerial uh, uh, more managerial responsibilities. This is somebody who's just trying to work up the freaking ladder. She's not there for her benefit and trying to help her. She's just there to secure a bag and say, hey, I'm her publicist. Or now it'll be, I'm her manager. It, it doesn't happen, obviously, but I'm her manager now. I'm managing Wendy Williams. I'm telling you right now that she hired a fan to be her publicist. And don't get me wrong. Yes, every single person that represents an artist needs to be an admirer of their, a, 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 an admirer or a supporter of their work. You can't support somebody, push that stuff out, manage them, be their PR, whatever. If you don't like their ish, imagine the joy. If you're doing that and you hate what they do, and sure, I'm sure there's plenty of publicists and managers out here that do that kind of stuff, you know, just don't like the artist, but they're just doing it because it's called money, right? But at the end of the day, when you have somebody like this, who's definitely going through some things, you'd think the people around her would be at least respectful of her well-being, not respectful of the work and i think that's a big part and a big piece to add into this conversation here that woman is a fan and the fact that here's the other thing too there was a part in the phone call with will when will found out that they went out to la he's he said wendy where you at oh i'm out in la wait who you with oh i'm with that black girl she literally said I'm with that black girl. I went with this black girl out to L.A. She don't even know your mother loving first name. She doesn't even remember your name, but she sh for sure know knows Will. But she calls you the black girl. The f? And you're buying tickets to fly out to L.A. representing her? Think about it for a second, y'all. Think about it. That's what Wendy said. She said it, roll back. Roll that ish back. And tell me I'm lying. Okay? She said that the black girl, I went with the black girl to L.A., whatever. She said something like that, but she most definitely said black girl. She was referring to Sean. Now, I get it. Dementia is a real thing. She may have forgotten and all that stuff, too. Let's put that in there. But I'm just saying, this is not somebody that is, uh, Sean is not somebody out here that's been all up in the family and knowing, you know, the family like that. In fact, in fact, let me let me pull this up, okay? In fact, it there was a scene where her niece, shout out to the niece, Shout out to the news. Let me just say, okay, she needs her own show. She did the best. <laughs> she had the most message <laughs> in the whole docu-series. I'm serious. She came through and she came ready, okay? But let me, let me just say this. This is the reason why I'm trying to say this Sean woman was not connected to this family like that. This very scene. OK, I don't have the video, OK, nor would I play the whole thing. But there was a scene where Alex is her name. OK, she's a journalist. I think she's like an on air anchor, news anchor in, in Florida. OK, so she came up to see her auntie, Wendy. 
they're both in the same game. She's got mad respect for her. They love each other and all that. Okay. Mad respect. Shout out to Alex. That's, I'm just going to say that. Shout out to Alex. But there's this moment that was wild, yo. That was so wild. And it said everything about this person. It said everything about the black girl. It said everything about Sean. Okay. So she comes in. It's like, hi, you know, talking to Wendy. And she's like, oh, when I see Wendy, because it's been a while, it, it's been a minute since she's seen Wendy. So as she's pulling up, she's like, oh, yeah, you know, when I see when I see her, we're gonna, we're gonna have this normal exchange that we usually do, and uh, and then it'll be great. She'll be telling me, you know, to get food and you know, trying to uh, you know, uh, eat her food and, and and raid her refrigerator and all that stuff, right? That's important. I'm gonna get back to that part here too. But as she goes in, Wendy's not doing that. She's sitting there going, "How do I turn on this TV?" Etc. Right? She's focused on something. Clearly, Wendy has changed. She's not the same Wendy that Alex knows, that her niece knows, right? So she sits down. She's talking with her, just trying to chop it up, catch up with her, right? And then, out of nowhere, Sean shows up. And the niece <clears throat> stops dead in her tracks. Like, it, it, it was so odd. But she's like, who are you? You've been, and she's like, oh yeah, I'm her publicist. I, you know, I came in, one of the lawyers was asking, you know, needed, was asking for someone to represent her, to take care of her, you know, as far as uh, uh, her publicity, et cetera, her PR, whatnot, right? And she has this look on her face like, what the, what? Who, who are you? Where do you, where did you come from? And how are you in, in connected to my, my own, with auntie here? What? And she stands up and she walks off, right? She's like, I can't do this. This, this is so jarring. I don't know who this person is. I've never seen this person in my life. Remember what I said earlier, yesterday, when Sean was being call, called a dumbass and telling, telling her to go get lipo, and she's like, oh, well, you know, I got thick skin. It's fine. It's, I got thick skin. No, it's called you're there for your own selfish reasons. You're not there to help her. You probably got your hand in her finances as well and all that. This is not somebody, okay? This is not somebody you need to trust. But then she comes back, and I feel like this is a still from that moment. But she goes in on Wendy, basically saying, you even told me the people who are there for you are the people that are not getting paid. The people that didn't ask one dollar, one dime from you are the people that you should be trusting. But you're trusting this woman. And all these other people that you're just spending money on, right? I mean, this girl came in, like I said, message the entire time, right? When he was getting annoyed with her, but the niece was telling some truth right there. She was dropping serious bombs. Knowledge bombs, okay? But she wasn't having it, right? And so, okay, of course, you know... <sighs> The niece went off and, and, and did her thing and all that, right? But instantly when you see how she reacts to Sean walking into the room and sitting down, she's like, who in the hell are you? I ain't never seen you. I ain't never had a Sean Zanotti or whatever the hell her last name is ever in my life. So how are you in my life right now? How, and especially how are you in my, 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 my aunt's life right now? What's the connection? Please break that down for me. And it sounds slimy. It sounds not real, y'all. It sounds fake as F. Like she's there for other reasons. Hence the reason why when she took her out to L.A., what a dumb, dumb thing to do. The stupidest thing you could have ever done, okay, could have ever done was do that. It shows that you cannot handle your ish. You cannot handle your artist or your, your client and that you're just wild out here. Now, there were some other things that were going on here 
let me see. Let me let me see what I can do here. Because there was a man, there was a part here that just destroyed me. Um, hold on. Hold on, guys. Sorry. And uh, do me a favor, guys, if you can, <clears throat> if you appreciate the combo and all that, please hit that like button down below. OK, please. And thank you. All right. Hit that like button. Hit it, hit it, hit it. Let's get it past 300 likes. All right. <clears throat> helps with the show, helps with the algorithm, all that stuff. And of course, hit that uh, reaction button if you're watching on, on Facebook. Don't forget to hit that follow button if you're watching on Facebook. Crush that. Uh, subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube, please, and thank you. That would really, really mean the world to me, okay? Now, there was a part here that I did. I was hoping I'd be able to find something. Um, hold on, guys. Trying to see if I can find it. Okay. Let me. Uh, let me try this here. But I mean, obviously, you know, what I'd like to know from you guys is what you think. Okay. Of this, the, the documentary so far. I think, and this is the reason why I changed um, the thumbnail. I changed the the title a little bit because I'm wondering: is is Wendy safe? Is she safe? I recently and the reason been changing I say that, and the reason why I say that is because, well, I don't want to give everything away right off the bat, but there's certain things ab about this situation and this docu-series that I think they're trying to say something, but it seems interesting that it didn't happen until way later. It didn't happen until way later in the docu-series. I think they're trying to say that underneath, I'm just going to get straight to it. I think they're trying to say that within, under this guardianship, she's not safe. But it's interesting that they didn't show or address that until the last 20 doggone minutes of the doggone docu-series. The last 20 minutes is when they threw that in. And it's not like they really hit you over the head with it. But it gave me a vibe like, She's not well, and under this guardianship, she's not getting any better. She'd be better if she, off if she was home with family in Miami with family because it seems like literally she goes to Miami to spend time over there, and she's the happiest I feel that we ever saw her in this whole docu-series because as soon as she gets back to New York City, it's dark, dismal, She's sad. She's back in her depression, leaning on her vices, etc. Is this guardianship really good for her? But like I said, it is not until the last 20 doggone minutes of this four and a half hour series that, that it's finally addressed. Oh, yeah. And like I said, it's not even like banging you over the head with the information. They say it right at the end. And I mean, we definitely can talk about the money. We can definitely talk about that monies, um, the spending, et cetera. Now, but at the same time, I will say this. What's the point of having all that money if you don't have the liberty to actually spend it? Think about that for a second, y'all. Think about that for a second. You work your 
butt off. Day and night. You make millions and millions and millions and millions of money. Millions and millions of dollars. I'm sorry, millions of monies. But millions of dollars, right? And if you decide to spend $100,000 on on something, then, hey, you spend $100,000 on something. That's your money. That's your hard-earned money. You deserve it. Right? Now, I will say people taking advantage of that and spending the money for you, that's a big problem. But if she's giving them the thumbs up and saying, go ahead, buy whatever you want. If you want, if you want to eat caviar and lobster tails every single night, which would rack up $100,000 in Uber Eats, then so be it. That's her money. That's what she wants to do. That's what she wants to do. But then suddenly now you got a guardianship, a court-appointed guardianship, a court-appointed guardian who I don't even know really gives a damn about how she lives and her even her well-being. But when she's in Miami, she's happy. She's happy as hell. Happy, happy, happy. So why aren't they giving that to her? And Brad, yeah. I mean, in the docu series, he he they do address that. They're like, "Well, what's up with the hundred thousand, you know, thing?" And she, she's like, "He was like, well, she she says, you know, she wants to spend the money, and if that's what she wants to spend it on, she's she's just gives me the thumbs up, and I I go and spend it. I I don't know. Okay, that part is a whole other conversation. But at the same time, that's her son. If that's how it goes down, that's how it goes down. I don't know if there's anything deeper or, uh, you know, anything sinister going on with with the the son taking the money. I don't know all that. I don't know that part. OK, but that is her money and it is her son. And I also will say I'm sure he grew up. He most definitely grew up with a silver spoon in his mouth. I'm sure he's used to living certain a certain way. But at the same time, $100,000 is a lot of quiche. On Uber Eats, that's a lot of quiche. So I see the pushback. But at the same time, if nothing fraudulent is going on with her bank account, then let her spend her money. Let her spend her money how she wants to be spending it. I would hope, let's also remember, he's young, okay? This is a young kid. At in his early 20s, he's not thinking about, oh, I gotta invest and do this, this, and this. I'm I'm assuming. Okay. I'm hoping by now he's doing that. I mean, with that kind of money, or or well, if he had access to that kind of money again, I'd be using that to invest, you know, real estate, stocks, etc. Right? Put it some put a crap ton of it in an IRA and whatever. You know what I mean? Do something with that money that will have longevity so that when you need it, it's there, right? Money that will just make money on top of money over time. Not, oh, let me just spend it all on things, fast cars and and, and, and booze and food and, you know, uh, the, the aesthetics. I mean, that's cool and all for like five seconds. But at some point, you're going to you, you need to invest that stuff. That's what I would think. If I had that access to that kind of money, right? But it is very odd. Nonetheless, that part is very, very odd to me. Okay. So we definitely need to talk about, we definitely needed to address that part. <clears throat> the uh, elephant in the room, if you will. But there was one part that I wanted to share with you guys. That was just, it was just heartbreaking. It was just very, very heartbreaking. It was this. It was a a moment with Black China. Now, when I say, now when I say that this was hard. Oh man, this was this was hard to watch. 
this was really, really hard to watch. I felt like we were watching a scene from a like a biopic, like a like a movie. And it was it's bad, y'all. Wendy is Wendy's in bad shape, y'all. Or at least in this in this particular moment, she is in bad shape. But and I didn't know that they had a bond like this. Uh Black China or Angela is her real name. I think she's going by Angela now. Okay, she's going back to her government name. All right. Uh, what is it? Angela, what is it? Angela what? Angela something. Is it Angela White? Angela something. I don't remember. But anyway, Angela. Wow. Uh, this one hurt. This one hurt me. Because one, let's keep it, let's keep it a buck. It is Angela White. Okay. So Angela White. All right. Uh, it's amazing how much she's changed, how much she's grown. Uh, Angela White, not Black China. Um, I don't know if it's faith. I don't know what it is, but she has found something. And uh, keep keep it up, okay? She's she's a beautiful soul. Because there's this part. Okay, first off, it just destroyed me because after watching all this, and then suddenly, Black China, Angela comes in. And she knows her, but it almost seems like she didn't, she couldn't put a name to the face for a second there. Like she seemed very disconnected. I'm talking about Wendy, Wendy Williams. Okay. Angela came in, she's hugging her and it was just seemed very disjointed, right? At first, then it almost seemed like she remembered her and she was like, yay, my friend, Angela, they're chopping it up. They're doing their thing. And then out of nowhere, she's taking off her shoes, showing her feet. And Angela just shows nothing but love to Wendy. Gently putting her hands on her, touching her feet, showing very real concern and love for Wendy. But then there was this part that I, Angela's talking to her, telling her about some things, you know, talking to her about a few things. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Wendy still has the wig on, her wig on, okay? But she says, like, I, I have to make up. I, I don't know why she said I have to, because Angela's saying something completely different. She's on a totally different conversation. And Wendy just, turns left hard left right and she says i got two makeup i got on two makeup something like that and then she rips off her her wig and this is why we see her like this right and angela's like oh you're so beautiful that kind of thing still beautiful wendy still beautiful and you could still and she's like i love you so much because it was like she, you could tell that Angela was like, okay, she's she's too far gone. At least right now, she's too far gone. I can't have a real conversation with her. And I, and you could see that Angela's about to break down. Like she's holding back so much, the tears, et cetera, that she just goes and lays right on top of her, like, you know, puts her head, you know, starts to cuddle with her, being like, everything's going to be all right. You could tell, like, she's just like, oh, my Lord. Like she's gone. I don't know where she is right now. But this isn't Wendy. This isn't the Wendy I know. Right? This was a really, this was tough, y'all. This one was tough. Because I know exactly, I know how this feels. I know how this feels. So it's very scary when you got somebody that you love go from being this vivacious bubbly, <laughs> boisterous, vocal individual to suddenly not have that be them anymore. It's a, it's a scary, scary feeling. Um, in fact, I got the a clip I wanted to share with you guys. We're going to look at this for two seconds. Let's take a look. Like recently, you've been changing my life since, you know, like we last spoke. You've always been like honest with me. And like put me in my place 
Yeah. You know what I mean? In like the most motherly, kind way. That's why I love you so much. Because even when I was going through my darkest times, like you never used that against me. You know what I mean? And that's how you know that the love is like genuine and it's yeah. always going to be there. You can call my phone whenever. I'm so serious. And I think I'm going to be back and forth from New York, so I'm going to be coming to see you more. Well, my real name is Wendy Hunter. That's the other thing, too. She kept saying throughout the series that her name is Wendy Hunter. She's like, I'm I, no more am I going to be called Wendy Williams. I will be called Wendy Hunter. Now, remember, Wendy Hunter is not her. That was the name she got when she married Kevin. Right? Ain't his name Kevin Hunter? Let me make sure I'm not on crack. Yeah, it's Kevin Hunter. Okay? It's Kevin Hunter. So see what I'm saying? Let me play the rest of this. Hunter. But you notice, as soon as she says, I'm going to be back and forth, they're having a, she's having a whole other conversation, right? About, I'm going to be back and forth. I'm going to see you more. I promise you, I'm your friend. The thing that she's looking for so badly, which is friendship, right? She said that in the other episodes. I'm looking for a friend. I'm looking for friends. I don't have any friends. This is a real friend. Angela's a real freaking friend. And she says, hey, I'm going to be there. I'm going to, I'm going to be here. Okay. I'm going to see you when I can. I'm going to be here. And as soon as she says that, she's like, I'm no longer, I'm Wendy Hunter now. Totally connect, disconnected. Then on top of it, why she wanted to name herself Wendy Hunter after that a-hole? I got questiones, but let's continue. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm divorced. Yes. He's got no money. Yeah. Yeah. I love you. So do I. See, and then even this, this part just seems so disconnected. She says, I love you. And so do I. She doesn't seem like she's really all the way there. You see what I'm saying? I love you. So do I. Huh? It just seems totally disconnected. And it's extremely sad because throughout the rest of this, you see the dementia, her, her mental health is deteriorating right before our eyes. But what's making it worse is that she has people in her corner basically saying yes all the time and letting her do what she wants to do. Okay, aside from Will, I mean, Will, I still am side eyeing Will. I'm going to be real. Okay, Will, I'm still side eyeing you, bro. I'm not sitting here saying that I don't trust you, but I don't know about all of that. Okay, but this is tough. Yeah. Uh, oh. mm. But anyway, as you guys can see, I mean, clearly. Uh, it was a tough scene, you know, um, a tough moment, okay? But you see that, right? You see that there's a connection there, that Angela truly freaking loves this woman's dirty drawers, okay? And it does show, like, man, you know, uh, Angela has... People can change. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna keep it a buck. People really can change, and you can see Angela. You know, Black China now is Angela. It's it's a completely different person, and from what we, at least from what I've known about Black China, okay, um, and that's a blessing that she's come. She did it like a 180, you know, and it's changed her ways. Hopefully, she stays that way. I hope so, but. That grace and that love and, you know, most importantly, that patience and 
just being there is all that Wendy needs. But I think that the people that are around her are too busy trying to make sure she's secure as a bag instead of actually taking care of her mental health and her health in general. No one cares, it seems. The team does not fully care about her well-being. They're too busy trying to get that money machine back up and running again, okay? Quizmatics, what's up, man? Uh, thank you so much for the comment. Uh, Wendy has, uh, has dementia, homie. That's how that works, bro. Of course, it's disjointed and sad. This, this, uh, dementia is uh, very tough, my guy. Uh, well, thank you so much for that information. Uh, yes, I do know that dementia is really tough. And uh, yes, she's going to come off disjointed. Hence the reason why I'm pointing that out is because of the dementia. Okay. Um, but yes, you're right. Dementia is very tough. I've seen it with my own two eyes. Um, it is no joke. Okay. Um, you know, my father uh, passed away from complications from uh, Parkinson's, but dementia was part of that journey. And dementia is no joke. I'm not kidding. Dementia is no joke. And uh, there is a lot of that where it's disjointed. It's they don't remember who you are. Sometimes they don't even remember who they are. Sometimes there are moments, like I mentioned, where they have a mental break and just take off. I'm not kidding. If they're not being, if that person is not being watched properly, those things can happen. That has happened to my father a couple years before he passed. And it is terrifying to think that. It's terrifying to go through that. Hence the reason why I said, imagine you're an assistant publicist, whatever you want to call it. And you fly this person to a whole other side of the country. And they're battling and dealing with some severe mental health issues. She's lucky that that, that Wendy did not have a mental break or a, a, some sort of, I don't know, where she just runs out into the streets of LA, a place that I'm sure that woman, Sean, probably doesn't even know much about LA. She should be thanking her lucky stars that this happened while cameras were on, on, on Wendy Williams' every move for those days that she was out there. But it's wild, okay? It's dangerous for, for people to be out here getting reckless with somebody like that. Dementia is no joke. <laughs> Dementia is no joke, all right? And um, so, yeah. Hence the reason why I'm pointing that out, all right? The disconnect is real. And it continues on. There are moments in this, in this docu-series where you see her saying, She's sitting right next to her own brother. Mind you, her brother's not named Kevin. But she's at dinner, hanging out with her dad because she's back in Miami. And in that, she's, she says, she literally turns over to her own brother and says, it's so great to see you again, Kevin. And then, of course, the, the brother's like, oh, yeah, you know, it's great to see you too. And he just rolls with it, right? Because what do you do, right? But he just rolls with it, okay? And that, those moments are real. <laughs> and it happens throughout the whole thing. Like, I didn't talk about this yesterday when we talked about part one, or, you know, part one and two. But in the last part of part two, she's in the car. She's all about this e-cig, Right? She's obsessing over this e-cig bought at this particular store that she goes to all the time. And it's right by where she used to shoot the Wendy Williams show. And they're driving in circles. 
And they go there. And they go to the place. And she, she's like, this is not the place. We need to go down. Go past the Wendy Williams or the Sherry Shepard Show's uh, studio. And when you get past there, you're going to find the smoke shop. They drive. He, They're just driving in circles. They go back. And he's like, we're right here. We're right. We're, this is the spot. The, the driver is doing that. And she's like, just drive. You know, do your job and just drive. Right? It was really bad. It was really, really bad. Clearly showing that she was having a little episode right then and there. That the de dementia was coming in and kicking in hard. Right? Like I said, it's, you know, this is not somebody that's fully available for any type of business transactions, any type of conversations for, for doing a show, a podcast, or whatever. Unless that podcast is like a very short and sweet type of podcast that's very condensed, very controlled, and it's being like watched through and edited, not live or anything of that sort. Because if her mind slips, it's a wrap. It's a wrap if that happens. No live audience, no nothing, right? Um, let me just pull this up here really quick. <clears throat> now, they also said that she is basically she has like alcohol induced dementia which is something that's new to me right that's something that's new to me i've i've never heard of that before but i obviously that can be a real thing um now i understand that it can be possibly reversed but it's very hard to reverse that the symptoms won't be as intense if she was to stop drinking, right? Her symptoms, her dementia wouldn't be so severe or wouldn't be so intense if she wasn't pounding bottles of liquor. You know, she said Tito Puente, right? It's pretty crazy stuff out there, y'all. Um, and the fact that she is pounding drinks like that, it's insane. So she's got, it's... Yeah. I mean, even so, somebody said in an article here, let me just pull this up. Right? Because even so, I'm still trying to figure it out myself. Oh, come on. I hate when they do this stuff. Can't look at this unless you log in. Come on. Okay. Let me show you guys. <clears throat> yeah. Was her dementia caused by alcoholism? Expert share insight. So blah, blah, blah. Diagnosed with frontal uh, frontal temporal, temporal dementia, FT, FTD, and uh, aphasia, which impairs the ability to com communicate in 2023, which is really sad if you really think about it. The, you know, you're, you, you're in, it's impairing your ability to communicate. And that's all she does. All she does is talk on the, on the mic, you know, uh, communicate with, with millions of people. And now because of all this stuff, she can't even do that properly anymore. All right. Given her reported history of alcoholism, experts are speaking out about the potential link between her alcohol issues and her current cognitive issues. So she entered a facility in April 2023, okay, uh, uh, to, to allegedly treat cognitive issues reportedly due to alcohol use as her uh, family communicates with, uh, with her through a court-appointed legal guardian. Now, that's the other part that I thought was very interesting as well, okay, before I continue on with this, before I forget. The family's not even able to talk to her directly. They, she can call them, but they can't call her. That's another thing that's so odd to me. That's so freaking odd to me. 
And then, of course, you know, you see Wanda. Wanda comes in, the, the, the sister, comes in and talks about this, this situation. And I thought the situation was so odd because she's sitting there saying, hey, they gave me the information. They're like, hey, you need to take this, basically take a, this course to, to become her guardian. And then you can have control of her and in, in the her her money and all that stuff, right? She's like, okay, cool. I'm gonna start doing the doing the proper uh, education or the proper pre- proper paperwork so I can be her guardian. And then she says in the interview or in this documentary, I don't know where the wall just fell, and suddenly they had a court appointed legal guardian for Wendy and all her stuff. And I was like, wait a second, how is that even happening? How does that even happen? Why is that even happening? Right? That makes no bloody sense. If you gave her the opportunity, then let her get the opportunity to finish up the paperwork so she can be the guardian for her own sister. Who is this guardian? Who the hell is this guardian? And why are they making it so difficult for the family to just be around her? This woman needs her family. This woman needs to be around the people that actually care and love her. This guardian doesn't give a damn about her. If this guardian did give a damn about her, she wouldn't be drinking every single day, losing her dog on mind, and, and making her dementia and all the other things that she's got going on with her worse. But that's the thing. It seems like the d- documentary at the very end decided to say, let's throw that in really quick. Let's just throw the last 20 minutes of this at, to talk about the, how the Guardian is just dropping the ball on this woman's safety. And health. All right. So, uh, yeah, on, uh, after undergoing a, a a battery of medical c- tests. Wendy is officially diagnosed with uh, primary progressive aphasia and, of course, the FTD, the uh, the dementia. Okay? Now, aphasia, a condition affecting language and communi- communication abilities, and the FTD, the, front, uh, the dementia, a progressive disorder impacting the behavior and cognitive functions, have already presented significant hurdles in her life. So... The link between alcohol and brain health. All right, this particular doctor, uh, it's, okay, has not treated or examined Williams, but said heavy drinking and alcoholism can cause damage to both white and gray matter in the brain, and over time can lead to deteriorating cognitive functioning, including dementia. These neurocognitive impacts are a result of a combination of alcohol's direct neurotoxic effects, depletion of nutrients in the body, impact impacts on liver functioning, and disruption of communication between nerve cells in the brain. So they say in many cases, individuals who misuse or are addicted to alcohol or drugs struggle with overlapping chronic medical and psychiatric conditions and this can make it very challenging to determine the et, et, etiology or cause of neurocognitive s- symptoms such as those observed in Wendy Williams. Now, this woman, Wendy Williams, is pounding drinks, is knocking out bottles by herself. If she's in her apartment by herself, She's got nothing to do all day. What do you think she's going to be doing? She's going to consume liquor. She's going to consume that alcohol. It may be out of pure boredom to keep her entertained. It could be severe depression. It could be a combination of both. We don't know. All we know is that what happened to her and what is happening to her could also be caused, could also be making her dementia worse. And I even said it yesterday. All the ailments that she's got, all the situ- all the things that are going on with her physically, her health, how she's declining, her weight has dropped significantly, et cetera. 
let's let's be real. All that has to do with depression and the fact that she feels like she doesn't have any purpose on this planet anymore. That's some serious stuff. You know, they say that there's a, a study out there. I don't know what the study is, and I'm not going to sit here and try to drop, like, uh, you know, stats like I'm Ben Shapiro or something, okay? But they do say that a lot of people that retire from work, you know, from their job or whatever, a lot of times rapidly go towards the grave because of the lack of purpose, the lack of rhythm a schedule, a purpose of getting up in the morning and doing work. Same thing with people who actually lose their loved ones, you know, their the husbands or their wives, their spouses. They end up they end up losing they end up dying quickly too because they feel like well my purpose was to my whole purpose was this wife or this husband. Now I don't have that anymore. What do I need? What can I do with my life now? Now that this person is gone, we hear a lot of those stories. I know that a lot of it is called uh, dying of a broken heart, right? We hear those stories a lot, but those things are very real. And I think what's going on with Wendy is one, she lost so many things in a domino effect within years. Failed marriage, you know, the mama dying, the, the her career just going up in flames, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then add on that she's got drinking and all the depression that's been on top of it. She has no purpose. So even in the documentary, Will is even saying, yeah, you know, because she stopped filming. At a point, she stopped filming. So she, he was giving them updates. And he's like, yeah, she's just basically locked herself in her apartment and it's just been drinking. That's it. She's just been drinking because she feels like there's no purpose in her life anymore. And that's terrifying. That's terrifying to think of. And it's, it's heartbreaking to hear that too. But now they said at the end, she was at a facility. She was, you know, getting well and all that. But what's crazy to me is that the family didn't even know where she was at. They didn't even know what facility and what her location is because the guardian is blocking all that information from the family. And I keep wondering why. Listen, just because they find out the location does not mean that they're going to go and get her money. The money gone, it seems like. So just because they go and find out where she is does not automatically mean they're going to go over there and go, so uh, I need like a couple mil to, to, to buy a new yacht. Like, that's not going to happen. Let the family know where she's at. Her family is her strength. That's all she's got right now. So give her her family. It's just insane. Madam, thank you so much for the two. Karma may now enter the room on these people. Yes. Um, I know you said this a while, uh, a little bit ago, but yes. All the people that are around her that are just sucking the life out of her, literally. They all. Phew. Karma's coming for him. Karma's coming for him big time. But this is very sad, very dangerous. And again, Near the end, it seems like they suddenly the it seems like suddenly the documentary people, the producers realize, wait, the story's this. Wait a second, we got this whole thing wrong. Let's do the last 20 minutes of the whole thing saying, hey, maybe this doc, maybe this uh guardian is trash and is making things worse instead of making things better for her. It's crazy that to think that it's basically like a conservatorship. But not really, but you know, where she can't even give her her money. Let her go and be home with her family. Let her have contact in, in, in a relationship with her, her son. What the hell's going on here? This is crazy. And then in my mind, I'm like, is this court appointed guardian a hater of Wendy Williams and is just trying to like seek revenge? 
on 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 the 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 things that she's unearthed or talked about on her show? Is this somebody who is not a fan and is just a straight up troll and hater? Think about that. That's it's insane. Imagine if you you know what I mean. It's like there there are there are artists that I'm just not a fan of. Okay. Now I have a heart. Okay. But imagine somebody who just you this person you, that person you just have a you hate them with a purple passion. Okay. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere you get a chance to control everything that they do, become their guardian. Now I know some sick mother lovers out there would make their lives a living hell. I'm going to make it hard for her. I hate her kind of thing. Is this the same? Is this that person making the decisions for this woman? Because this is insane. This is insane. But like I said, they're trying to show like, oh, she's happier with her family, not with this guardianship. The guardianship, she is an absolute train wreck. But when she's not in New York, and when she's back home with her family, she's happy. She's lighter. She's full with food and not liquor. And I don't think that this, I really don't think that this guardian is helping the situation. I think this guardian is making things worse. And again, every time she goes back to New York, it's dark, dismal. She's depressed. She's back in her castle. Okay, at the top of the mountain, bored, and getting wasted. Now, I'm going to open up the phone lines. I just kind of wish the documentary. See, that's the other thing, too. Will the documentary be used in court? And that's a good, I mean, or, you know, the documentary, this documentary will be used in court. I hope it's used to help her, not to hinder her. She's a mess, but I'm hoping that they use it in a narrative. They spin the narrative in, in the right way and say, hey, this is the reason why we are here in this room together. It's because this is happening. You see this in the documentary. She is a mess. This guardian is not making things better. She needs to be with her family. She needs to be home in Miami with her family. We will take care of her. Shoot, you can watch every penny that we, we if she ever uses her money, you can watch every penny that she uses, that we use. But at the same time, just let us have our daughter or our mother, our aunt back. That's it. She's, it is bad, yo. And if she continues with this guardianship, she will drink herself to death. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Because these, and then that's the other thing that's so insane to me. All the producers that have been, that were sitting there going, like, you got to come back to New York. You got to do this. You got, it's like, y'all, sweethearts, she done. She done. She's retired. No more talking about podcasts. No more talking about shows. No more talking about on, being on TV. Let this woman rest. Let her go and have her life, okay? She's been running like this for decades. It's time for her to slow down. Because her going revving back up again, it will kill her. That will kill her. I guarantee you guys that. All right, I'm going to open up the phone lines, okay? It's time for a little speak on it. All right. Keep it. I'm going to say this. Keep it clean. Keep it. Keep it respectful. Keep it classy. Don't be a dickhole. And I'll be kind to you. <laughs> it's as simple as that. OK, let me just make sure. Everything's Gucci. Real quick. OK. Looks like everything's Gucci. All right. Everything's back to normal. But yes, call in. Let me know what your thoughts are. The, the number is in the chat. Love to hear your thoughts on this. Where do you stand on this and all that? Um, have you seen it? Et cetera. Have you seen it? Oh, hold on. Hey, you're on the mic with the Pascal Show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? 
Oh, hi. Uh, hey, Tyler, <laughs> what's up, man? What's on your mind? Speak on it. Good. I'm actually not going to be on here very long. Okay. But uh, um, I will say I I find what's happening with her to just be really awful. I've never I've never liked her um, uh, as, as a person, but I, I but I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. I yeah I don't I don't uh, I don't wish this on my worst enemy. I mean this is the I wouldn't wish this on anyone. Yeah, this is this is bad. Um, the treatment yeah. and what she's gone through, uh, it's it's insane to me. It's absolutely insane to me. And so, yeah, I, yeah, I'm not. I wouldn't sit here and say that I'm the biggest fan of Wendy Williams either. But she has had some. She has had some really great moments in the past. I mean, a broken clock can right. a broken well, clock can well, still be. Would say that again? What? It's, I mean, she she has people watching in like. Like she's entertaining for a reason. Oh, absolutely. Like I said, or well, like I was trying to say, a broken clock is is right two times a day, right? So right. you know, for me, you know, I, I wouldn't sit here and say, oh, she's someone I was watching every single day. No, but hearing her two cents on things definitely entertaining. And I mean, she made an she made an avenue in, in a genre, right? She made a a, a career out of just speaking her mind and, and doing what she do um, without her, sure. there, and, without her. And, there, and she, and, go ahead. Sorry. The, sorry. Uh, go well, ahead. I think without her, there wouldn't be like, there wouldn't be like YouTube gossip. I was, literally, like, literally what I was just about to say, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah. So, Hey, uh, lover or hater. I mean, she, she's an icon, you know, and, uh, and I wish her the, uh, only the best, even, even if I'm, not personally a fan of her. I I I I I hope that she just peace and just and, and just just with people who aren't gonna like take advantage of her and just yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely, Tyler. Uh, but thank you, man. Thank you so much for the call. I'll be talking to you soon. Bye bye. Peace. Uh I somebody was just trying to call in, but Yes, Wendy had flavor. I agree, Debbie. She had flavor. Okay? She gave us flavor. Uh, and it, she definitely was entertaining. I will say that. She was definitely entertaining. I will not sit here and say, oh, yeah, you know, she wasn't entertaining. She didn't do damn thing. No, she was entertaining as hell. Okay? That's why she had a show. That's why she had, what, 13 seasons? Give or take a season? I mean, damn. That, t that takes a lot. Okay? You got to be entertaining as F. It's a lot of work to be to be that. Okay? Um, and to and to rise the way she the way she rose, you know? Um, and I know that there's, there was a lot of people saying that like sh the Sherry Shepherd show or Sherry Shepherd kind of did her dirty with the, her taking over the not not only her time slot but the actual whole studio and all that i don't know about all that but um give me a call I, I if somebody just tried calling i don't know it's not i didn't hear it i don't hear it my hold on if somebody just tried calling i didn't hear it i swear to god That's interesting. I didn't hear it. So uh, try again. I didn't hear it. I swear. There it is. Hey, you on the mic with the Pascal show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hi, it's Amy from New Jersey. Hi, Pascal. I've called before. Yes. Um, you know, what's interesting. I She used to live in my neighborhood. Um, I live a couple towns over from where I don't know if she sold the house. It was Livingston, New Jersey. She had a very nice, like, big, one of those McMansions, you know. And um, I used to go to the store. This is a person that's very independent. My daughter's told me, Mommy, why don't you take a picture of me? You saw her because I just did that. I was trying to shot 
this you know, for staff. I'm a nurse, so they they called me goodbye. They, and, um, you know, uh, and, and it's, it's that, you know, if patients are like, making them enjoy themselves by, by keeping them from their habits. Like, for instance, like, you used to see people with, like, that are end stage whatever and they and, and they just say let them smoke whatever they want let them eat what they want let them enjoy what they their um poisons right. are so it's a it's a very mixed thing but um i'm, I'm going to be very sexist and say that um you know th th this is like why you know sometimes you say oh i'm lucky i have a daughter i'm not going to the nursing home you know because if you have a son and it, and it's very hard i've seen it because I've done home care, and I've seen in a lot of these families where, if it's only a family of person that has sons, it's very hard to see that family take over the care of the of the person with dementia, yeah. as opposed to a family with more daughters, where they're more likely to take their parent in. Because you're, there's so many dynamics with this type of type of a situation. But but the fact that she has money is a shame because she could get so much good care. Um, she can be in a hospice facility getting such dignified care. They would be doing a lot of therapies with her. There, there, it's just, in my opinion, it's a shame. It doesn't matter if you're, um, you're black, white, green, yellow, a person. Everybody deserves care because we all bleed the same red blood. And everybody deserves to have dignified care and be kept comfortable in their last days and get good end of life care and treat their um their their symptoms aggressively mm -hmm. um that mm -hmm. are causing them discomfort and causing them to be undignified and 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 you know can you imagine her going out and then she soils herself do you think these people are going to be taking care of her making sure she doesn't sit in her Whatever, uh, all day. Absolutely. And, and get the bed sore. Right. No, right. They, you know, these, there's no one advocating for her that loves her. Absolutely. None, none of these people, like I said, they're all there for when the, the cameras are out and when the paparazzi is taking photos. They're all there for the for the glitz and the glamour, but they're not there for when she really needs the help. And that's the problem. If you're going to sit there and and yes all day to her with with drinks and liquor when she shouldn't be doing that at all, that tells me right. that this is not somebody who cares about your well being. Doesn't care if if you fall like if, if something really well, personal yeah. if something really personal happens to Wendy, like you just said, you know if she messes herself, something really bad like that happens. She has some some mental break of some sort. Are, are they actually going to be there for her, taking care of her and making sure she's she's all right? I doubt it. No, because I doubt she has even like one of those devices, you know, for the emergency or they have the tracking devices they put on them now. Yeah. And also, you know, she can be sitting there in the bathroom and just t keel over and fall and break her hip and she'll be there for days oh, yeah. if no one's even going to check but you on you got to remember, even it, you know, that's one thing, though, at the uh, it's Jamie, right? Jamie? It's Amy. Oh, it's Amy. I'm so sorry, Amy. Amy, uh, that's all right. But when you, what, what, uh, what in the uh, in the show, uh, in the documentary, uh, Will even said like he was going and checking on her, or this one time he went to go check on her, and he was like, "Yeah, when I walked in, or I had to bust into the house or into the apartment, right. and the place was just an absolute wreck. I mean, all she's of doing course. is boozing and 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 going crazy, right?" Um, well, uh, you know, it's too, well, the, I can tell you when my grandmother was, my grandmother had dementia and we, we put her in the home and, and we, the thing that got us, got her out of there was because she was flooding the downstairs bathroom. Wow. You know, she was putting pads in the toilet and the bottom of the apartment was getting all the water in it because they forget to turn off the water. Yep. They forget that then they forget to turn off the gas or the, or the stove and causing fires. Yep. You know, she can, she can, that's a danger to others when you're not monitoring people oh, it's dangerous. with these conditions. Absolutely. It's very dangerous. Uh, I, so um, that's I'll let somebody else call because yeah. I'm just talking about a lot of my home because I, I did home care. I did visits with all these types of people and it's it's very difficult to manage them with money or without money. But the money is there so somebody should really be taking care of her in the right You're way. You're right. So, Amy, thank you so much for the call. I appreciate that. Take care. You too, sweetheart. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, you know, uh, it, it's it's crazy how much um, 
Um, the, the phone lines are still open, guys. Um, just I got to put this the speak on it sign back up. But it's crazy to think how uh, how how much like this, you know, how much I've I, I've I've seen with my own two eyes because you know because of dementia, um, Parkinson's, dementia, et cetera. Um, you know, just the things that I've witnessed and experienced, you know, as a loved one, as a son and all that, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty mind blowing, um, to, to witness those things. Um, so the fact that she's going through this, yeah, most definitely. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, is sure. She could pay all kinds of money to have people take care of her. Sure. But it's a different thing when you got family there for you too. You know, it's one thing to have all the money in the world and, you know, all hands on deck health wise, you know, healthcare wise, taking care of you. But it's something else when you know that you have your family there, you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to get the best steak in like New York city, uh, cooked for you by the best chef. But it's another thing when you got somebody actually your dad making that steak for you. Does that make sense? Like it's it's different. You know, there's love. I know that sounds corny, but there's that different energy in that in that food. Why is your your mama's best dish her best dish that no one else can can make it like that? No one else can make that like mama, right? Shoot, you can go get the same dish at a five-star re restaurant, okay? And it won't taste the same. What is it? Is it is it all the seasoning? Because you know some of these some of these places don't know how to season. Trust me, y'all don't know how to season out here, okay? Learn how to season that meat. But at the same time, though, is it because of the seasoning? You you feel me? No, it's not. It's that extra. Is that zero zero zero? Is that point zero 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 one percent thing that McDonald's and and all these restaurants are trying to recreate every single day, but they can never get it because it's not made with love. I know that sounds corny, but it's true. It's just true. Something about Mama's food, you know. It's like Mama's. That dish, though, and you give it to somebody else and they make it and they're a great cook, but it's just not how mama makes it, though. You know what I mean? Or dad, you know, like dad's chili. You know, you had, you ain't had my chili till you had my chili. You know what I'm saying? And then you eat the chili. You're like, damn, that's some good stuff. But you go somewhere else and some chili cook off or something like that. It's not the same. It's not the same. Because there's that 0.00001% of love that's been put into that mother lover. You see what I'm saying? Am I right or am I right? That's all I'm saying. Okay? But phones, phone lines are open. Now you guys got me hungry. I don't know why. I got myself hungry. But you know what I mean. OK, it's the same thing is that the 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 health care, you know, the health care, you know, uh, nurses, et cetera, being in and out of the house, helping her and all that. That's fine. But it's very clinical. They got to do their job. They're just doing a job. But then you have your son or your your family there to help you throughout those those trying times, those tough times. It makes being home and fighting through this, but through whatever you're fighting through a little bit more comfortable because there's love there. There's that 0.000001% that that nurse is not going to give you. You see what I'm saying? So that's all. I think that she needs to be around her family. She needs family. She needs love. She needs people who are going to ride. The, she needs her ride or dies. Not this BS people who are all after her money and only give a damn about her money. Hey, you on the mic with the Pascal Show. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Ryan from North Carolina. Ryan? Yes. Ryan, hi. Thank you so much for calling in from North Carolina. What's on your mind? Speak on it. No, just to touch a little bit on what you were saying about um, 
you know, getting our favorite dish from our mom right. or our, our favorite aunt in the world. It all goes down. Like, even if my favorite aunt in the world brought me a McDonald's cheeseburger, it's going to affect me in a different way because of the essence of where it all comes Facts. from. Like what you were saying, like the whole energy. Yeah, you'd be like, damn, where did this um, come from? This is from McDonald's? Man. Right. Like, <laughs> like, we know. Like, not, like science. And I, and I didn't. I usually fact check myself before I ever speak on it. So I didn't do it before I called. But, like, we know that there's been studies about people that are even not religious or consider themselves atheists that have, that have been ill, that have been prayed for and know that they've been prayed for heal quicker, heal Facts. faster, heal better. Or we know that people that have been in loving surroundings while they're recovering from something heal faster. It's, you know, we can attribute it to whatever it is, but if you're a person that's in need and you're stuck with strangers, regardless of those strangers have the best of intent. Well, kind of, a, if they have ill intent, obviously, but, you're not going to be as well with family. And it all boils down to like, it doesn't matter if we like her as who she is as really as Wendy Williams. It's not okay. And it's not right to not advocate for her to be in the best possible position. Um, and I don't, I don't know. My opinion is I don't think she is, but I've also been splitting back and forth. So I don't, maybe I don't know. All that. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, I, I, I will say this. I mean, she, she's clearly not in the right hands, or at least as of, from this docu series, maybe things have changed over the past couple months, but from what we under from what we got, um, you know that it seems like they stopped filming a year ago around this time, like around March oh or April. Yeah, something around March or April, and then they just put this whole thing together. Um, so last year is when all this happened. So, or, or you know, when they wrapped filming this. So I am curious about where she is now, what the situation is. I've heard stories about her still being in a facility, uh, still not being fully connected with her family. They, She can only call them. They can't call her, which is still kind of jacked up in my personal opinion. Uh, still under this guardianship by a court-appointed guardian who we still don't know who the f is that person. Um, but you, you are right. I mean, it, you know, the, the one thing that's really terrifying and sad to me is this person worked her tail off to build her name to build this brand right. and then all of a sudden out of nowhere that brand and that name and all the accolades all that hard work is for nothing now it doesn't even matter right it doesn't even matter yes it matters her name right that's why this guardian is all up on her ass with her her financials and what she does all day or day but what's interesting, though, is that even her name is is not helping her get out of the situation that she's in right now. It's just sad to think I mean, that. Look at, Go ahead. Look at, look at compare it to same but different situation with Britney Spears and her conservatorship. It was Britney Spears. Right. For 13 years, the courts sided with the conservatorship that whether she should or should not have been in there still remains to be seen. Right. But like their name is not giving them. So it's a good, it's like the double edged sort of, in my opinion, good and bad. Mm -hmm. um, because we, because if you go in front of these, in front of the court, I'm a transcriptionist. I do like, I have such a weird appetite or not appetite, but like compartmentalized view of all that. It. So it's like the double edged sort of like, if I want to go in front of a unbiased body when in something like this, who doesn't know me from Adam. And so therefore can't say, Oh, Ryan, the girl, and, and attribute that to whatever decision they're making. But then in the same respect, it's also seemingly unfair to not take into consideration people like this that have spent all these years building themselves for that to not be any effective help either. Like I'm obviously contradicting and hypocritical of my own statement, I'm aware, but you know, it is that horrible double-edged fact of what it is. And like the, I guess the good side of it is getting public knowledge of these things going on so that when these things happen to people that don't have a name, Mm. Think about how much worse it is for for unknown Ryan mm -hmm. or unknown you. It, it yeah uh, shedding light. Maybe. Yeah, it, it you know it it's it's wild to me that. I mean, what what's also what is also interesting is that this is not she's not the only person going through this, right? There are other right. people that are going through this. Not only just uh you know that have guardians. Um, that have guardianships, et cetera, that are just not names. The one thing that is beneficial about having a name is that she's able to turn this into something, make name, make a, right. make waves, uh, and have this documentary out here. And of course, when we, what we've been trying to figure out, right, is 
what is this all about? What's this documentary for? Why did it come out? Because clearly, you know. And what is the motivation for isol- So we can uh, we can speculate the motivation, but what is the what is being said is the motivation for um, distancing her distancing her from her family, or you know, is somebody showing some kind of direct evidence that they've embezzled from her over the years? Like, is it is it is it truly financial, or is it? And that hopefully not agreed on the behalf of the guardian. Right. I, 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 I could probably rattle at this no, for a long time because I have lots of opinions on everything. But. <laughs> no, it's all good. I mean, to me, at the end of the day, I think that the documentary, it, it, it says it in the last 20 minutes, which I was like, I kind of wish that they just did sprinkled that throughout the entire thing. But I, I feel that, hey, this has to do with them saying, hey, the guardianship is not working. It's not helping. Um, she's worse than than she is with family. And I think that's what they're trying to say. That she needs to be home or she needs to be in Miami where she can be healthy. She could be away from booze and get back to some sort of mental health. Um, but I don't know. We don't, like I said, we don't know where she is. The people that love her. Say that again. I'm like, sorry. Like, com- let's uh, let's compromise. Keep her with the guardianship, whatever. But don't isolate her from the people that love her. There you go. Place her in a location where the people that love her can be active participants in her life. Whatever. Keep the guardianship. Yeah. I guess. But you know, like find a compromise because that's what the world. I mean, that's just the balance of the world. But. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like I said, I have lots of opinions and I could go, I just stand on a tangent. So I'm going to shut up now. It's but. all good. I appreciate you calling in. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Right. Thanks. Have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye. Um, yeah. I mean, yes, I agree with her. You know, I think that there could be a happy medium, right? Guardianship could still exist, but in the meantime, she can be with her family. They can still control all of her finances. What she does out here. If she stays in Miami, she ain't going nowhere. So let her just go back home or back to Miami with her family and let them take care of her the proper way. I mean, she, like I said, when you see her home, you can see how she lights up. She's so happy. That's what she needs. That's good for her mental health. Being around people that love her and want to make sure she's okay. You could do both. You could definitely do both. So, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm I'm praying for for him. You know, I'm praying for for her and all that. I mean, you know, I know that we had a poll yesterday about is this karma or was she just handed a really bad, you know, a really bad deck of cards, right? And uh, th- you know, thankfully, you guys have heart, <laughs> and a lot of you guys said that uh, this was just bad luck that she was just handed some really bad luck, um, and that this is not karma. I know there's a lot of people that would be like, this is what you get, Wendy. Well, uh, I, I, I wouldn't say all that. You know, I think that this is just life and how life unfolded for her. But there's an opportunity, opportunity here for her to turn everything around. Yes, dementia is dementia. There's no coming back from that. There's no, there's no cure, okay, that I know of that's going to make things better for her and whatnot. But I do know that she could do whatever she can to try to be as well as she possibly can. One of those things that could slow the process down is her stopping the booze. If she stops consuming that stuff, that could help tremendously. I also say getting herself out of that funk, out of that depression, out of that dark vibe that she's in And it only happens, it mainly happens when she's in New York, when she was in L.A., even though I don't agree with her moving, going out to L.A. when she did do that, okay, she still was lit up. Like, I don't mean lit like, you know, drinking lit. I mean, she was just lit up. She was happy. She had a smile on her face. She loved seeing people. She went to uh, to her star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame you know, she stood there, people were taking photos with her, all that stuff. You know what I mean? You could see pride. You could see 
She was happy to be out and be around people, right? And New York, I think, is just a dark, dismal hole for her. And I think it's a constant reminder of work and how she's not working. But if you take her to Miami, maybe the thought about work won't be so prominent in her head. You got to remember, too, down the street is Sherry Shepard's studio, which used to be Wendy Williams' studio. Can you imagine living by that, seeing that every single day, knowing that that's just a few or a couple blocks down the road? You're waking up every day and you're seeing Sherry Shepard's billboards out in Times Square and out in your face all day long. You don't think that she's going to sit there and obsess over that? You know, for a fact, she's going to be obsessing about that ish. Every day, I need to get back out there. I need to work, 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 because New York is work for her. New York is work. New York, <laughs> living in New York is a rat race, okay? You got to be constantly on your toes. You got to constantly be on the balls of your feet, ready to go this way, that way. You got to be moving out here, agile as F. It's New York. So when she's in New York, she doesn't know how to turn it off. And all she's doing is reeling and thinking about how she doesn't have that show that she used to have. I need to be back on the show. I need to be back on top. I need to be Wendy Williams. Written in the, in the lights, right? But by her going somewhere else, going to Miami, going to Chicago, anywhere else, anywhere else, could be an absolute blessing for her in the long run. And then maybe the obsession, the focus, that desire that to be back on TV will slowly dissipate over time. And she'll just enjoy being around her family and friends, the people that actually rock with her, the people that actually care for her. And it'll just be a fleeting thought. So I hope at some point, I hope at some point that documentary that we saw, whoever, who the powers that be, the people that need to see that documentary, see it. And I hope it sways them in the right direction. I'm not sitting here saying that her, her family is 110% the best choice. I don't know. But she seems to be happy there. So give her her happiness back. She deserves it. The phone lines are done. We're not doing any more speak on it. Speak on it's done. But I do appreciate that, guys. I appreciate you, you guys' two cents, your thoughts on everything. Um, and, you know, my, my prayers are going out to her, man. My prayers are going out to her and the family. And, you know, I, I get it. A lot can be a lot of prejudice. A lot of prejudices, I can't, I, for lack of a better term, are going to sprout solely because of this is a woman that is that comes from money. Let's keep it a buck. Okay. Let's keep it a whole buck. OK, there's going to be a lot of people side eyeing family, side eyeing any person that wants to be in her corner because she is money, because she comes from money, because she built millions and millions and millions of dollars. And she doesn't have access to right now, but she still is a wealthy woman. So I get that there's going to be people side eyeing like crazy. But unfortunately, that's, the, that's how the cookie crumbles here. She built this career. She built this empire, this brand that will never go away. She touched millions of people. And even with this documentary, touched a million more people, millions more people, even more now. Some people might be like, ah, I don't like her attitude. It was terrible, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, at the second part, she kind of brightened up a little bit more. It was different. The first half was terrible. She was terrible. But the second half, it there was more heart and there was more care. I really hope she gets the help that she really needs. 
And I hope she gets the love that she deserves. She really does. Kimberly, thank you so much for the 500 yen. Um, I would have loved to call in, but just wanted to say this is another beautiful show. Pascal, full of love as always. Thank you. Thank you so much. You could you could call in. If you're calling it, you could call in. Kimberly, you're more than welcome to call in. Go ahead. The phone line is open for you. If you want to call in, call in right. Go ahead. Call in right now. Okay? Call in. I'll make sure this is open so we have it. All right. I got it. I got it. But yes, just for Kimberly, if she's going to call. Okay. If not, I understand. But I want to, I want to, I'd love to hear Kimberly. Okay. Um, but yeah, with this, I just hope she gets the, the, the love and the care that she right, rightfully deserves. And I just don't want her to be alone anymore. That's the thing. The whole time, every time she's back in New York, she would say, I'm just so alone. And I think New York is one of the busiest, one of the most overpopulated, loneliest towns in the world. I really do think that. Okay. New York is dope. I love New York. But at the same time, you can get swallowed up. And I don't mean, and I don't mean TD Jakes. But I think that there's a lot um, of people, a lot of lonely people in New York City that are just going through the motions and busy just trying to make that money. It's sad. 9-11, for example, was one of the first times that New York actually slowed down and started going, hey, we should be neighborly to each other. We should be nice to each other. And then, and then give it five or five, six, ten more years, and then she, and then suddenly out of nowhere, New York is back in that same mentality. I'm effing walking here, you know? Goes back to the same old vibe. It's sad, but very true. Okay. Um, yes, but I think you can call. You should be able to call. Um, but yeah, that's probably it probably is. Hold on. Yeah, if you're in Japan, yeah. Hmm. I could get okay, hold on. Let's try this. Let's try this. Um, you know, I don't like using this very much. I really don't. I really, really don't. But uh I'm gonna put the the link you can do through the internet. Let's try this. Okay. This is only for Kimberly in Japan, okay? Um, but it's the link into the show. And I, what, what I say is you don't have to be on camera, but you can use audio. But if it's not Kimberly I'm hanging up on, I'm not even answering your – It's this link is specifically for Kimberly in Japan. That is it. Don't be an a-hole trying to click on it and jump in. Do not, Okay. Seriously. So try that. All right. Yeah. We we don't need no uh spicy videos of 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 insertions, if you get what I'm saying. All right. I don't need, yes, we don't need to be swallowed up. Okay. Have you ever been swallowed? Swallowed up. I don't I can't even do it. Have you ever been swallowed? Swallowed up. I can't do that. It's it's gross. Okay. Yes, Auntie. She says no. But yeah, if uh, Kimberly's still here, we we waiting on you. Just let me know, yes or no. Um, if not, I can. You know, we can do some other things. Okay. Okay. Let's try this. Oh boy, this better be who it is. Hello. Hello? 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 Is this Kimberly? (gasps) 
Nope. Not not anybody. See the see that's the thing. No, I just turn them off. I don't I don't trust nobody. See what I mean? See what I mean? There's so many jerks out here. So many jerks out here. Did you hear that? That was hilarious. You know what I mean? Kimberly, hello. Yes. Yes. Nice try. See, this is the reason why I don't do the video uh, stuff because mother lovers be mother loving out here. Okay. Hello. Yes. Hello. Oh. Uh, hello. Stop. Just stop. Did you try? Was that really you or no? Was that you lying? Was that you? I didn't think that really was her. You can you can try it again. You're more than welcome to, but I am not playing around. How's that? You got to understand that I don't know who I don't know. I haven't never heard her voice. OK, but some people will call in and say something that they say something that they're not right. And then next thing you know, they're putting up videos and stuff trying to get my my show taken down. So. um I mean, if that really was you, then my bad. But that's that would be, that's news to me. Okay. Well, hey, Kimberly, try again. Try it again. I apologize. I thought you were just some fake person trying to mess with me. Okay. Try again. You know, you've seen my issues before with, with people out here making fake stuff. But uh, hop on here, okay? I got to be careful, okay? But, but once I heard, I was like, I'm asking hello, and then nothing. So try it again. Try it again. No disrespect. I'm sorry. Let's try this again, okay? Okay. Hello? 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 Yes. Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. Hey, turn off the, uh, put the show okay, on okay, mute okay, in the okay. background. That okay. might help. Hello? <laughs> Hello, Kimberly. Yes, it is. Okay, I apologize. I'm sorry. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> you know, you know, you, you, you know my, my story. You've, you've seen yeah. enough shows. Some people are out yes. here that do crazy stuff. So I apologize. Like as soon as I hear one thing, it it comes off some like something else. But thank you so much for calling in from Japan. I appreciate that. Where, where in Japan? Not where. <laughs> where? It's uh, like about two hours from Tokyo. Oh, that's what's up. And you, yes, yes. So, so you're American, right? Yes, I am. And you are teaching out there in Japan. Yes, I am. Right. You remembered that. Yes, <laughs> I do. I do. I, you know, you, the little snippets of things you guys tell me, I try to keep them back in the brain matter. Um, Thank you so, so much. Oh, of course. Of course. And again, I apologize. I'm so sorry. I, I, I just got to be super protective. Okay. Uh, I actually understand. I was panicking too. I was like, oh. <laughs> I, was like yeah. I, talk to <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. But everybody give. Everybody give Kimberly some purple hearts in the in the chat, please, and thank you. I appreciate you thank calling you so in from, thank you. from Japan. Sorry for taking so much time. It's, you know, you're not taking it up any time. Wait, by the way, by the way, uh, what time is it over there? 
Um, just a minute. I'm like. Is it uh, nighttime? Yes, it's like 2 a.m. <laughs> Damn. So we talking. Yeah. We are talking to the future right now, guys. Okay. Yes, so <laughs> with, with this Wendy Williams thing, uh, oh, yeah. tell me what you uh, tell me tell me what your thoughts are on this. Well, I was just gonna say, um, my stepdad was like a pretty hard alcoholic, oh. and really went to his brain, and it was hard on his real son, like my half brother. So. It was it was kind of hard watching her because he did do a lot of crazy things on his last days. Mm. But as you said, he in his last days he went back to his mother, and it looked like he had like a really, I guess he had a peaceful ending. So what you were saying, yeah, I I think it's really important for them to be in a place where people really love them. So mm. I actually agree a hundred percent with it. and alcohol. Yeah. Um, so, so you're saying that he, so did he ever find sobriety near the end or did he just stay w leaning on his vices? Hello? I think I lost her. Hmm. Hello? Kimberly, hello. Ah, well, we tried. Yeah, it, uh, we lost her. And maybe she'll hop back on. If not, um, I, I do appreciate her calling in. I mean, two o'clock in the morning tomorrow, by the way, in Japan. That's that's wild. That is some wild stuff. Talking to the future. Um yeah, I mean, I I, I feel that the, I I do know a lot of uh, not a lot of people, but I do know some people that have have dealt with that kind of thing as well, where you know they have a family family member that's you know battling some sort of alcohol um, substance abuse issue, and then of course there is some sort of mental health issue that transpires because of the excessive amount of whatever substance that they're you know abusing at the time um it is uh kind of crazy um yeah i i guess the well you know kimberly thank you so much for calling in i'm uh you know i don't know what happened the the connection went down or something that was weird um but i would have loved to hear the rest of your story so maybe you know maybe another time maybe another time you know trace even said it's 5 15 p.m wow in UK or in the UK over there. That's crazy. You know, um, Jackie, 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 Jackie. Jackie wants to call in. Where? Who's Jack? Where? Where? Jackie, Jackie, who? Oh, wait, nope. I don't see a Jackie in the conversation. At least I don't see it. But again, I get, you know, like I said, when it comes to those video uh, video calls, I get nervous because uh, people are out here doing, you know, up to no good. OK, um, but I do appreciate. Oh, Jackie Sue. Um, Jackie Sue can call in. She can call in on, on the phone line. OK. She can call in on the phone line. So, Jackie Sue, if you're around, I'll take one last phone call. Um, let me let me hear your thoughts. Give me a call. The numbers in the in the chat. Um, go ahead and give a give it a call. Um, but not the video chat. I don't really use the video chat thing anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Let's hear Jackie. Give us a call. All right. Phone lines are still open. Let's rock and roll.
Oh, okay. Uh, I see. Okay. Never mind, Jackie. But I appreciate you guys calling in and all that, being a part of the conversation. Mm. But that is the show, guys. Okay? I appreciate all y'all for being here. It really does mean a lot. Uh, you know, we got a lot of other conversations we got to have, but I wanted to have this conversation with you guys like we had yesterday. So I do appreciate you guys being here, conversating with me about this one. You know, like I said, we try to talk about all the things that are going on in the world, aside from just true crime stuff. We do heavy true crime over here, but at the same time, you know, it's nice to talk about different topics and uh, cover different conversations. Okay. So I appreciate uh, you guys calling in. I appreciate the the support and you guys being a part of the conversation. So please do me a favor before you head out. All right. Before the show is all the way over, do me a favor, hit that like button down below, please. And thank you. That would really mean a lot. All right. Let's get it past 400 likes. We're almost there. That would really mean a lot. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button hit that reaction button if you're watching on facebook hit that follow button if you're watching on facebook as well okay that'd be greatly appreciated and uh yes please go check out uh my membership simply by hitting that join button down below that'd be greatly appreciated check out patreon.com forward slash the pascal show pascal merch.com check out all my stuff and we will be talking about some more stuff here very very soon there's another story i want to cover with you guys which is going to be a much bigger show i have a feeling and uh so i want to get ready for that and it's another one it's kind of true crimey kind of not but we still got to talk about it nonetheless and uh i want to share that with you guys so we're going to be chopping it up here very very soon make sure you have the notification bell set to all so that you know whenever i go live or whenever i go and upload because it is random obviously as you already know lately i've been doing a lot of random lives um and uh hopefully you guys are appreciating that okay so please be sure to do all that subscribe hit that like button hit that notification bell and I'll be talking to you guys very, very soon. It's time to get going. Be good to yourselves. Be good to one another. And I'll see you guys very, very soon. This is the Pascal Show. Bye.